It's time to dig in and discuss the questions on the minds of today's leaders. You are listening to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. This is where we get vulnerable, raw, and authentic about the stuff that really matters. Now, here is your host, Kathleen Reeson. Welcome to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. And today we have an incredible show for you. It's packed, it'll fly, but I have brought in three people that I think are just really up to some incredible things and I wanna share what they're up to. So if you're watching, you can actually see the picture of their, their reveal, this book they've been working on. And if you're listening, we will get to that. So I have three friends here, Tony Thielen, Matthew Mitchell, and Jeffrey Kaplan. And what we're gonna talk about today is their new book that they worked on, they just, just published here, like within the last few weeks, called Am I Doing This Right? So right here, I've got it in my hands and you can get a copy too on Amazon, but we'll talk all about that. So first off, the three of you came together with a mission. So you know, Tony, do you wanna kick that off and just share what it is? And then then Matt and Jeff, or Matthew and Jeff, you guys, you guys chime in too. I wanna hear what you're up to. How did this come about? Yeah, I'd be glad to Kathleen. And thanks for inviting us on your program. Um, during the COVID, uh, period when it just kicked off in early 2020, I decided to do two things that, you know, I could control versus, you know, letting the world control things around COVID. And uh, one of them was to write a book around, you know, summarizing what I learned over the last 34 years. And the other was to get a PhD and go back to school. And I started with a survey out to lots of people and uh, kind of let, let that go on LinkedIn. And then I started calling professors around the country about a, a getting a doctorate degree in leadership development. And eventually that road led me back to Des Moines, Iowa to Mr. Matthew Mitchell. Uh, and we had a great discussion about the pros and cons of getting a doctorate degree and what it took and the value and where it went. And ultimately that led me to uh, put that one on the shelf, so to speak, and not pursue that. But at the end of that conversation, Matthew asked me, uh, but tell me a little bit about this book. And I says, well, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I've gotten a, a ton of inspirational stories from a survey I put out on LinkedIn a few months ago, but I, I haven't done anything with it because it's a little overwhelming and I, I got too much information. I don't know what to do. So I kind of stopped doing that as well. And Matthew shared with me that uh, through some text analytics software, you could really drive some good uh, insights into that. I said, tell me more. And one thing led to another and Matthew came on board as a co-author at that point in the middle part of 2020 and later on soon after Jeffrey Kappen came on as well. And the three of us got started on this project together in late summer of 2020. And we've been working at it ever since. And the funny thing is, for the first year and a half, we worked remotely without even meeting in person. And sure. it's been a great journey ever since. Got it. Well, thank you for sharing that, Tony. And so, Matthew and Jeff, I know you guys have different backgrounds, too. Tony, very briefly shared yours. You've been in corporate for 34 years and in different roles. So, so Matthew and Jeff, can you talk about you know, your backgrounds and what really led you to this book? Jeff, I'll, I'll start off, I guess, um, I like to say I'm a recovering physicist. Um, and, and it's a 12 step process. But uh, I think I'm, I'm through the 11th rung of, of um, physics recovery here, um, studied physics and math in undergrad, and then went to work for uh, a joint venture of Sony, Motorola, Nokia and Ericsson to program some of the world's first smartphones in London. And and one of the, the stories I like to say is, you know, um, you know, did you ever have a Nokia or an Ericsson cell phone? And a lot of us did. And we had 96% of the market share for all smartphones in the world until these two little lifestyle companies called Apple and Google came around and uh, and sort of basically put us out of business within about five years. So the the point is, I think, especially for listeners of your podcast, um, you know, you never know what you know direction life is going to take you professionally. Um, and and my sort of journey took me to a PhD in, in international business and, and strategy, um, and here back to the Midwest to uh, to you know think about leadership, work with executives, and that's when Tony called and and I guess. Um, 
through a, a role at Drake University as a, as a strategy and international business professor, but also as an owner at Bataan Global, which is a consulting company. Um, we just are really interested in, in leadership. And I, and I love the title of your, your podcast, Pushing the Boundaries of Leadership, both personally, but also for organizations. And when Tony sort of came around, um, if anybody knows Tony, you'll know that he's uh, kind of a force of nature and can be pretty persuasive. Um, and when he sets his mind to doing something, um, there's just a gravity to that. And uh, and when he called that day, it was clear that this is somebody that I wanted to to, to hang around uh, and to be interested in in his projects. And then when he shared that he had that data, that you know almost a thousand leaders that shared some of their most intimate leadership stories. Um, some of the their key learnings, the best advice they ever received, or maybe the biggest regrets they ever received, or, or biggest regrets they had ever experienced. Um, that was something that really was interesting um, and uh, definitely wanted to sign up to be a part of that. So I, I know we'll get into the book a little bit more, but that's a little bit about my background and, and how I came to, to sort of join this journey with Tony, and, uh, and I'm grateful for it. Jeff? Thank you, Matthew. So a similar story, did not start out wanting to be an academic, spent 10 years doing international sales and marketing, uh, became fascinated with the way that uh, people collaborate and struggle to collaborate across cultural differences and linguistic diversity, um, which led to a chance conversation with Matthew uh, while he was still a PhD student that led me to a PhD. Um, and uh, we've been uh, running uh, the program at Drake University and Baton for nearly a decade now. And I think uh, when Matthew and Tony first approached me and told me about this project, um, one of the things that sort of rung in my ears was reflecting back to when I was 22 as a first generation college student trying to make the way in the world and the questions that we are continuously asked People anywhere from 18 to 68 tend to ask us some of the very same questions with slightly slightly nuanced differences, but otherwise, um, there are definite points of inquiry. So when the opportunity to jump on board came, uh, I, I quickly and gratefully said yes. I love that Tony reached out and ended up talking with two PhDs <laughs> who both, and then decided book over PhD. I, um... <laughs> It is not, PhD is not for the light of heart, and it is five years or six years, and it's a lot of, uh, a lot of ups and downs along the way. I, I think so it became, the book would be more enjoyable. The, it became very <laughs> obvious. Tony knew everything that was contained within a PhD that was useful, and, uh, and we <laughs> saved him the scars of the emotional baggage and therapy that come with a PhD as well, so. Beautiful. As a daughter of an academic, my dad's a neuroscientist with a PhD, and I have a sister with a PhD. I think they would echo the same thing, and what's so beautiful about, yes, exactly, what's so beautiful about what you're creating is that when I read through the book, really the the interviews in here are, I don't want to call them interviews, but the quotes, when they're so beefy, is that a, a great word to use, beefy? 100%. <laughs> to describe some of these points. And then it really, what I love about it is you tied back into the, these real chapter focus points. So let's talk about, we've got this big idea and now we're going down to the research to say, what do we do with these thousands of these beefy quotes? <laughs> what do we do with that? to actually produce something that looks like this book that can be something that people can relate to. What was that process like? Yeah, I might jump in and uh, start that off. Um, that, that 2020 year was really amazing. Um, and you gotta have a lot of help uh, to author a book is what we also learned along this journey. Um, and one of the things that we did early on was I, I wrote three letters to three authors that I really respected. I've seen them speak. I've read their books. And I, I simply asked them to, uh, would, they, would they be willing to touch base with me from time to time uh, to serve as a, a writing coach mm -hmm. and help me through this process? And all three of them re replied back in the affirmative, absolutely, would love to help. And, and one of them really... Uh, committed to touching base monthly uh, to help us with this process. And they gave us advice like keep writing every day. Even if you don't know where it's going to go, just keep writing, getting things documented. And um, some of them helped more on the publishing end, like finding a publisher and what how you work through the nuances of that. 
and 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 yet another one was around the the marketing and the sales and things like that and how do you get the word out but but the creation of the book was the most important because that was the most difficult challenge that we faced in that we started to uh, use the text analytics software to cluster themes of of input from the thousand leaders around the world and then start to develop uh, a series of book of what could be a great book but it had like 70 themes in it and then we got feedback from our publisher and said look that's too big it's too ambitious you got too much you, you got to limit it to 70,000 words or less mm -hmm. come back to us when you're a little more focused on your agenda and Jeff Matt Matthew and I got together and started really honing in on you know what are we hearing from people what is what is the interview material telling us and wh where can we add the most value possible and all of that came together in a in a few meetings that we held together where we really focused on what this thing was going to look like and what it told us was that most people's best advice came in the first five years of their career they always remembered great advice within the first five years of their career. And secondly, if you give people advice earlier in their career, the compounding interest and the compounding value that they get over the course of their career is just overwhelming and, and immense value. So that's why we targeted the first 10 years or so or the beginning part of, of a career or people that are going through changes to really discern, okay, how to, how to have a great career, and how to have a fulfilling life. And, and that's the process of getting to where we really got serious, where we might have something here on our hands that would be very, very useful for a lot of people. Got it. So one of the questions, and Matthew and Jeff, this may be more about Baton Global and some of those that data points. I'm really interested in how you went from a, a thousands of different comments to this distilled down information. So what was that process like? Jeff, why, why don't you take this as, as the only one of us that's trained in textual <laughs> qualitative research? Yeah. This, this was the moment when the PhD paid off in the writing the book. <laughs> okay, so we're, so we're supporting the, familiarity the PhD process with, uh, right now. <laughs> yes, no, this is this is when we geeked out and uh, with some of our researchers at Bataan, uh, started coding for key themes, keywords, distilling what stood, uh, how could we group things together uh, in ways that would make the most sense and be the most helpful. Um, and that was an iterative process. You know, we went through it once and it was 100 themes and it was 70. And then we picked a target uh, age group and thought, well, you know, which of these are going to be most relevant to that market segment? Um, but yeah, it was it was basically going through and coding every comment on keywords and themes uh, and then using the magic of technology to let it sort into buckets for us to reread and verify. Um, and so, yeah, that was that was the part where the Ph.D. paid off. Jeff, morning. I remember um, a, a picture that Tony sent us because we were working virtually where he had cut out like 70 uh, pieces of paper, maybe, and, and sort of listed them on a page and then. We took that that sort of um, analog analysis and then put it into a, um, the text analytics software and, and you know confirmed some of them and then tweaked them and then uh, really found some good nuggets of wisdom there. Yeah, started trying to get to the point where like, okay, these two things are different. We're not talking of you know four things that are really the same, uh, distilling down to some some main ideas that we could carry forward into the chapters. I, Kathleen, I, I mean, I just also have to add, you know, Jeff and I, I think Tony's mentored hundreds uh, and coached hundreds of leaders throughout his career. And, and then I think Jeff and I have the, the fortune to, you know, at Drake University, I, I literally teach um, the first class at Drake University Business 001 to about 250 incoming first year students. We say they're their brain stems haven't quite fused yet. So they're not like fully formed human beings. Yeah. Um, and then I, I actually had the opportunity to teach the absolute last ca class, the capstone strategy course for the MBA students. Um, and so from anywhere from 18 all the way up to 88, you know, you know I've, you know, graduate students who are, are much, much older, um, you know, have that opportunity to take some of these ideas and, and, sort of, you know, test them with focus groups or students. Um, and some of them really, really resonate. 
Um, and some of them didn't. And and Tony, I mean, we we started with uh, 16 chapters, um, and then there were two additional topics that we added at the at the end of the process, um, and and those were financial literacy and citizenship. Um, and some of our students sort of said those topics are are just incredibly important things that we'd like to know a little bit more about uh, before we you know pursue a successful life or a fulfilling career. I really like your process there. And in my first book, I used post-it notes. So it was nothing more scientific than that. And so I appreciate <laughs> that you've got this deeper process behind it and can use the tools to disseminate information in, in the format of a book. So we're gonna go on a quick break, but when we get back, we're gonna dive into who gets to read this book. So of the people listening, which ones get to, get to go to Amazon right now and order this book? All right, you're listening to The Kathleen Recent Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Enjoy this quick break. Are you enjoying the conversations on The Kathleen Recent Show? Kathleen speaks both in person and virtually at companies, conferences, and retreats all over the world. Learn about booking Kathleen Reeson for your next event at KathleenReeson.com. That's KathleenReeson.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reason Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reason Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. And today we have been having a great conversation with my friends, Tony Thielen, Matthew Mitchell, and Jeff Kappen. And we're here talking about their new book, Am I Doing This Right? So who that's listening, how do they know that they get to go on Amazon right now and order this? And it's on Prime, right? It could get here in a couple days before Christmas. For those of you that are listening live, it's, it's holidays here. How do they, how do they know this is for them? I, I, I'll jump in. I mean, anybody that's ever asked the question, am I doing this right? It's for you. And I hope that's everybody. We, we like to say, you know, stay curious and keep asking yourself, um, you know, definitely visit your local bookstore or Amazon. But um, if, if you're facing some big questions in your life, your career, maybe some transitions, like maybe graduation, um, Tony mentioned, you know, um, most of us receive the most important pieces of advice in our lives in those first five years of your career. So we we say sort of the the target market is that 18 to 30 year old demographic as you're starting off that career, that first or second job, maybe that first or second promotion. Maybe you're thinking about a career change. Uh, maybe you're coming out of COVID and, and thinking, man, what what did I learn these past few years and, and how is that going to shape the rest of my life? I think those are the types of folks that would really, really benefit from, from this book, from the questions, from the exercises. We've talked to, to so many hundreds of students um, in universities around the country, but also um, last week I had a chance to chat with um, a young lady who was recently laid off. And, and she said, this book has been helping her sort of, you know, take a step back um, and then, you know, not a step back for a retreat purpose, but a step back in order to re-engage with a clear mind. Uh, I'll only say this in, in, in closing, you know, whether it's, you know, you've recently been, uh, you know, promoted or, or accepted a new job or laid off. Um, I also had the chance, you know, with a, a 65-year-old executive, um, she was thinking and contemplating her legacy. She's retiring in the next year. And so that was a very big transition for her. Um, and she said, this book came at the right time for me. Um, it's answering some of those questions about how I chart you know, the, the remaining legacy 
that I'm going to leave beyond my work uh, identity and into my my retirement phase. So anybody that's asking themselves that question, am I doing this right, Tony? Um, I think that's our target market. What do you think? Yeah, and and Kathleen, I, I also think it's, you know, anybody that you know that might be going through that. Like you might have a college student in your life or you might be a grandparent wondering, geez, what can I, you know, give to them that might, you know, lift up their life a little bit. Um, nothing says you care more than a gift like something like this that says, hey, it's a small investment, but it could mean the difference in your life. And, and truly, we're, we're in this to help lift people's lives. We're in this to use other people's experience uh, to others' advantage. And that's the whole point. So many people have poured into our careers have poured into helping us be successful in our life. This is just our version of doing the same thing. And, you know, if you've got a son, a daughter in college or headed to college or graduating college, or you've got a young professional in your life that you care about, this would be a great surprise for them, uh, especially at this time of year where it's, you know, it's so reflective. It's, well, how did last year go? And well, what's on the docket for next year? And what are my New Year's Eve re resolutions? And, you know, it's just that time of year. You know, this would be the great time to surprise somebody with a little uh, gift and say you care about their life. Have a great uh, year and looking forward to staying in touch or something like that. Sure. I'll share, yeah, it's, it's I'll, I'll share two other examples just to spur uh, ideas among viewers and listeners. Uh, I was at a medical appointment last week and uh, the doctor turned to me and he said, I got your book and I'm going to do it with my children as a family project. We're going to read it and do the exercises like at the dinner table, the whole family is going to talk about who we are, where we're going, what we want to do. Um, and then I, I had another friend this weekend uh, who said, I'm trying to discern, my youngest child is about to start full-time school. I need to decide what's next. I'm starting with your book. And I was like, that's a lot of pressure and I hope it uh, takes you down the right path. But I think there are various kinds of transitions and moments in which uh, the reflections contained within can be useful. Well, and Matthew, were you saying that your oldest went through the, the first exercise? Um, my, my middle child, so almost 13 years old and, and yeah, he, he went through the first exercise which is just all about self-image. And, and there's a little test in there um, that, that, you know, invites you to answer the same question 20 times, which is, who am I? Uh, and you, you go through that reflection, you know, 20 times, and you just, you know, fill in an answer to the question, who am I? I am Matthew. I am, you know, a son. I am a brother. I am a husband. I am a father. Uh, I'm a, a long-suffering fan of the Chicago Bears, whatever those <laughs> things may be. Um, but when you when you look at those answers, it really helps identify what's important to you, how you identify yourself, because I think Tony, Jeff and I would all say one of the very first and it's actually the chapter of the first or excuse me, the title of the first part of the book, which is who am I? Um, the very first step in, in sort of being, um, you know, useful uh, of having a, a, a fulfilling life and a successful career is know thyself. It's inscribed on the temple at Delphi, you know, thousands of years ago. And, and that journey uh, into service of others really starts inside. So he, he went through that process and he said, um, you know, he, he listed a, a response and it says, I'm a brother, I'm a son. My name is Benjamin. And he said, I am my own worst enemy. Um, and that answer for him really sort of opened our eyes and his eyes to, okay, this is something that we can dig into and understand a little bit why, um, you know, what, what, what can we do as a result? And it was, it was really powerful for all of us. Those are so revealing in those questions. And I don't, I haven't shared with any of you guys, I've spent thousands of hours in emotional intelligence training rooms. And one of the things that we talk about in there is, is getting really deeper than I am not a thing, I am not a job. Hey, for me, I am a loving, authentic, abundant woman and understanding that at my core, that's who we are. And one of the things that, that you three have done really well is creating that bridge to getting to that point where it's not about a thing, a job, a role, it's who we are at our core. What are those things that really 
resonate with us. And then that is something that I remind myself every day, especially when I get into really challenging times when I'm stretching myself into big goals in business or life, going back to that core fundamental of, no, I'm not, I'm not a mom. I'm not all those things. I am a loving, authentic, abundant woman. It's who I am. So this to me is one of the core parts of the book that really resonated to say, it's not about all this stuff. <laughs> I like that heart icon. Matthew's giving us a heart. Yes. Yeah. So in the book really weaves that in there. And Tony, I was reading one of your stories. And what and for those of you that haven't read the book yet, you know, Tony's got that kind of first off story glimpse that, that Tony, you share about your life and then wrapping that in with some of these quotes and then how do I apply this? And so that was a beautiful flow. And I remember your story from a health perspective, Tony. That was one that stuck out about your shift in health. So do you remember the one I'm speaking of? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Just being ground down and almost all parts of my life were uh, in a state of change. Um, very busy traveling. Um, I've We just had our third child out of three um, and planning a move to another uh, job. And, you know, just seemed like fatigue every day it seemed like we weren't getting ahead and my wife I give her a ton of credit for just rising above the fray and saying something must change here and just settling uh down and making a few changes like getting rid of sugar drinking enough water start focusing on your sleep it was dramatic and and what what happened was when the health improves your decision making improves your ability to process the things around you improve and you start your sensory perception is like reset because you can now you can handle things a little bit better. And I've never forgotten that. And to this day, you know, going to the doctor. Yeah, we've been to doctors because of, of certain ailments and things like that. But but going to a doctor, it, it was just daily, almost not quite daily back then, but it was a lot more often. And today we, we really haven't seen a doctor for uh, anything other than a routine uh, physical or something like that in 15 years. And I'm so proud of, of my wife for helping my family understand that. And I'm so grateful for my life and the impact it had on my life that I, I felt it was important to share that story. So bigger picture question, and it, it relates to everything that I'm seeing in the book. What, what do you, so just the three of you, this is my question to you. What do you think is the real reasoning behind burnout? <laughs> I didn't tee you up. Let's just let the audience know. I did not tee him up with this question. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you can see their faces right now. No, but what do you, what do you think is really behind that? Because I think it's exactly what you're talking about here. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say a few things while Matthew and Jeffrey, you know, compose some thoughts but to be real blunt it's just ever changing priorities and demands of a life well lived that continual build up as your priorities change over time and part of it is you put the pressure on yourself to be successful and you get stuck into your your own zone and i love benjamin's quote matthew Sometimes we are our own worst enemies and we put those obstacles in front of us and, and we, we, we deal with them inside our own little self and, and it's a burnout within. And then there's the burnout, you know, outside of ourselves with competing priorities around community, around a job that continues to get uh, more demanding over time. And then if a family comes along, there's obligations along that line of of uh, obligations and the inability to keep pace with the rate of change in your life, I think is at the core because adaptability to me is what gets you through those growth spurts. Are you able to adapt to the change in environments around you? And if you, you aren't able to adapt through them, that typically finds you in that grinding sensation that you're going nowhere and it's not working and you're not going to sleep very well at night and you're not, not going to, it's just a cascading series of bad decisions that uh, hold you down. And that ultimately results in bad health, bad mental health, bad emotional health, and it puts you in a dark place if you're not able to adapt effectively. 
sure, inability to keep pace with those commitments around you. That's what I heard you say. And, and adapt, adapt. Yeah, adapt. Yeah, 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 beautiful example. Thank you for that. Matthew, Jeff, do you have other thoughts on that? Um, so I, I, I think Tony touched on it, you know, um, we're, we're just living through exponential times. Uh, we like to say, you know, today is the slowest day of the rest of your life. Um, and so, you know, wherever you are, 18, 19, 20 years, um, you know, things are only going to get um, busier. I think when we look back over the last 50, 100 years, uh, the demands placed on on us as human beings and on as organisms are only increasing, and and so I think there, as Tony mentioned, the the sort of pressure uh, to change and to move from without, uh, I think is is pretty big. Um, but but I think one of the the things, as Ben said, you know, we're our own worst enemy, and and we're I, I think especially we we've worked with so many organizations, but a lot in the Midwest. Um, I think Jeff and I have lived abroad, and Tony has served and worked abroad. But but unique to sort of this interesting U.S. specifically Midwest culture is an attitude of just incredible conscientiousness. We don't want to let people down. Uh, we put our shoulder to the grindstone. And, and the work ethic that's associated with the U.S. Midwest, I think, um, is, is something that leads us, you know, out of an abundance of good intention, it actually has a terrible impact. Um, and you can't work yourself into to peace. Um, I think uh, we're, we're incredibly conscientious and hardworking. But um, I think the the burnout and and um, is really a result and a product of trying to be everything to everyone, and and not letting anyone down. Um, when I think in many ways, Kathleen, as you mentioned, um, you can have aspirations and strive to be things. In fact, in our second chapter, we talk about our personal brand, which is built on a formula. You know, I want to be known for this. But I literally just wrote it down, Kathleen. I think it's also very important to acknowledge and affirm, you know, who you are today and being satisfied with that. I'm I'm a, a, a loving and, and abundant woman or, or whatever your comment was. Like that said, it's not just about who I want to be in the future. It's also about, you know, being satisfied and affirming and being comfortable with who we are today. So I think burnout comes from a lot of different places uh, both outside of our locus of control, but also internally for some very good reasons, but also so, for some very uh, bad and, and maybe destructive reasons too. Jeff, any, yeah, what's, what's the answer here? Burnout, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting time to pose this question as Matthew and I have to turn in semester grades tomorrow. Um, and so we, we are feeling the crunch. Um, Echoing a bit something or a point that Matthew perhaps made implicitly, I think that the breadth versus depth uh, considerations get us a lot of us into trouble. I think we try to go broad and deep on many, many activities in many areas of life, and then we're stretched so thin um, that we cannot keep up and cannot uh, deliver the value we want to to everyone all the time. Um, I also think the way that um, one approaches failure and thinking about learning also impacts the way that burnout manifests in people's lives. So um, the number of people we come across who beat themselves up over a decision made five years ago or who uh, attach perhaps too much in, of their self-worth to a one-time decision or situation I think that over a lifetime that accumulates and the burden is, is greater and greater. Um, so getting to a point of realizing that, okay, this one thing didn't go well and I'm gonna learn something from it, but it doesn't mean I'm a bad person or I should just give up. Um, but I think when people are stretched thin and the, then failures become sort of, it's like micro failures continuously um, because you aren't able to deliver and keep up with the pace. I think that uh, there's an accumulative factor that leads to burnout, especially if people never take a break or fill their own buckets or just go spend some time on a beach under a palm tree. Yeah. Um, it's it's necessary and it's not a, a rest is not a luxury, which is something Tony taught me earlier this year, um, that it is part of wellness <laughs> and we do occasionally 
it's good to run it be in fifth gear most of the time but every once in a while it's okay to stop as well so um oh, i think it's that great message. pressure that gets us yeah great message at this time of year especially where we're in this period of of holidays there are some people that are just planning on blasting through especially with the holidays for those of us that are celebrating christmas falling on a sunday there's a real opportunity to blast through and that doesn't necessarily set us up for 2023. yeah we're all shaking our heads like yep yeah we got that well, we're gonna go on a quick break but when we get back i want to hear you'll get a second to tee this up in your minds i want to hear your biggest ahas from this process what's that one thing that you think this i didn't see coming so we're going to go on a quick break. You're listening to The Kathleen Recent Show, Pushing the Boundaries of Leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Talk to you in just a second. Are you enjoying the conversations on The Kathleen Recent Show? Kathleen speaks both in person and virtually at companies, conferences, and retreats all over the world. Learn about booking Kathleen Recent for your next event at KathleenRecent.com. That's KathleenRecent.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the Kathleen Recent Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. And we have been talking all about, am I doing this right? That's the title of this book. And I've got my friends, Tony Thielen, Matthew Mitchell, and Jeff Kappen here talking about how they created this idea. So the question I teed up right before break was, what's the biggest aha that you learned in this process? So who wants to start? I'll start with one aha, and then I'm going to reserve the right to come to a second one after we. <laughs> That's fair. Um, when when you asked the question, the first thing I thought about um, was the actual process of writing and marketing a book, just that in and of itself. Uh, so Matthew and I had published as academics in journals and textbook chapters, and I'm sure that like eight people somewhere in a PhD program read them. Uh, but the amount of work that goes into the promotion and creation of community around a book after the text is written, um, I thought was surprising. And uh, I've been caught off guard several times in the last few weeks walking into a meeting uh, in which someone that I do not know runs up excitedly and says, I just re I read this yesterday and I got questions. And can I, can I, can we, can we talk for five minutes about this thing that I want to, I want to discuss? So I think um, one aha has been sort of the what goes on behind the curtain in book publishing and public reaction and, and seeing, being able to see the impact that the text has had on the way that people think about their lives and their future plans um, has been unique compared to other uh, publishing experiences. Tony, I'll let you go next. Yeah, sorry. Jeff, are you saying that the college students, after you teach your class, they're not coming running up to you afterwards saying, that was such a great class. I've got all these questions <laughs> I want to run through. Uh, it happens <laughs> sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. Uh, and that's a very different environment, right? <laughs> like they're, we're set up for that one. Uh, that's that's an underhanded pitch to get one excited student in class. Uh, that's for right. With strangers to recognize you or sort of look at your name and then say, oh, I got your book. Uh, well, really, most of the time they say, you know, Tony is pretty much how it begins. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, Tony, I know Tony. And then there's a the conversation. Now we're uh, best friends. Oh, I love that, it. <laughs> now that one degree of separation means we all, we've all known each other all our lives. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and uh, straight to the heart of the matter as quickly as possible. So, Tony, I'll let you go next. Um, and Kathleen, one of the secrets of those college classes that they teach is most of everything they teach is in the syllabus. So just <laughs> just reading the syllabus is, gets you pretty far. But um, Advice to all listeners, read the syllabus. 
in the syllabus but, uh, it is you know i i've had a lot of similar surprises in the from a process perspective you know from you think you're done and you're just beginning many times it's just the way the process works but what i would call an emerging aha is yet to be really fully fledged fleshed out i i've always had confidence in the product of you know the the design of you know my experience plus matthew and jeffrey's experience and tools plus the the lived advice from people around the world and the the gift that that they all gave us in sharing their story which are deeply personal but i think the emerging aha is the best value that might come from this book is that fourth section starting to get some feedback from people about this really is more of a diary or a journal where people are highlighting things they're writing in the margins it's more action oriented towards the the fourth element of every chapter and i've talked to enough people and i've i've had enough interactions to start to get a feel for that's where it's at that's it's it, the first the first elements of each chapter kind of set it up but the value that people take away is the processing where they become the fourth author and they they start to lay in on their life on what they're going to think differently about or the nugget of wisdom that they can change tomorrow that's where the gold is and i always kind of thought well that's kind of a nice way to end each chapter a few questions or some additional reading it, you know from a distance it looks great on paper but when you have somebody come up to you and say man this is changing my life and i want to tell you why and here's what i did you know then you know that's when you're like yeah this is all worth it the last two and a half years that's good enough for me right there that's good enough 100 percent. thank you um, I, I, I can't echo that. I, I, I've said, you know, those questions at the end of the chapters, those are the sleeper hit. And, and, um, I think Tony, Jeff and I all sort of love this journey, um, metaphor for this book. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a journey to write a book. It's a journey when you read the book to go into yourself, to understand yourself and then sort of, again, the, the destination is not the book or yourself in the end, but, it, you know, that's also um, a nice starting place to as a journey out into the world to know yourself in relationship to others. Um, and I think that's really important. And so th those questions, Tony, you know, framed it up. We've left enough room in the edges of the book to take notes. Um, you know, the reader is the fourth author and frankly, probably the most important author um, and, and there's lots of spaces in there to go, you know, further into additional readings and further into reflections. I, I would say, echoing Jeff and Tony, seeing folks' reactions to this book has been the biggest emerging aha. And, and I wouldn't even say it was an emerging aha. There was a thunderclap for me once when, when um, I had a, a coffee with a colleague and I, he knows the book project. And he said, um, you know, uh, I, I know you're working on this book and I know it, it it's pretty exciting, but I don't get, I don't sense the energy that, that, you know, you, you want to, you know, get it out in, into the world so folks can see it. And he said, it, it feels a little bit like the kitchen analogy. You don't want anybody in the kitchen until the, the meal is prepared. You, you know, you're really holding back, but you know, you, you need to do the work to get it out into folks' hands because the world really needs to see some of this. Mm -hmm. And and I took that feedback and I just have thanked him eternally for it. And and I, I went back to some of my student essays and uh, we had the opportunity with 250 students over two years to, to sort of test drive some of this material with them. And they wrote stories about their lives in response to some of these reflection questions. And Kathleen, I'll just share one very short quote uh, from, from a student essay that, that was a smack across my face. It was a thunderclap for, for me at least as an aha. And, and she was talking about um, the, the chapter about self-image. Um, and she says, my main takeaways from this chapter are the personal stories that different professionals have about their self-image. Um, I, I chose, you know, in my life not to take different opportunities 
because I was always asking myself the question, what am I, what if I'm not good enough? I'm always comparing myself to other people. and I'm scared of disappointing loved ones. She says, my whole self-image has been based off of how other people viewed me. But what really struck uh, with me was what Haley Stomp said in her uh, quote that she shared. She said, I would have found my voice sooner and been more the hero of my own story. And, and my student said, I absolutely love this. And I'm going to take it with me for the rest of my life. She says, I want to be able to tell the stories of my accomplishments and how I was brave enough and confident enough to take and run with any opportunity that life threw at me. At that moment, I thought, man, um, this is no longer a product of Tony and Matthew and Jeff. This is, you know, them taking it and making it meaningful for their lives. And I was just incredibly excited, ex incredibly humbled, and, and just very grateful uh, to, to have had that opportunity to have an impact in one person's life like that. Thank you for sharing that. And knowing Haley and how if you, you meet her, you think, gosh, she's somebody who's confident and has it all together. But to know that deep beneath the scenes, we all have these questions and that's okay. And to normalize that we're all gonna ask ourselves these and we still get to move forward. And that's what's really valuable and what I hear you saying. All right, so we have one really quick, our shortest break that we're gonna have. And when we <laughs> get back, what I wanna hear is what's next for the book. And this is really more than a book. It's really, I see it as a movement. I mean, there's so many things you could go with this, but what I wanna hear is what's your vision for the three of you as you move this forward? So think about that while we go on our last break. You're listening to the Kathleen Reeson Show, Pushing the Boundaries of Leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Talk to you in just a second. Are you enjoying the conversations on the Kathleen Reeson Show? Kathleen speaks both in person and virtually at companies, conferences, and retreats all over the world. Learn about booking Kathleen Reeson for your next event at KathleenReeson.com. That's KathleenReeson.com. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reeson Show pushing the boundaries of leadership. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now, back to the program. I told you, shortest commercial break. <laughs> Listening to the Kathleen Reeson Show. And so my question for you, we have been talking about this book, Am I Doing This Right? And what's next? Tony, I'll, I'll take it first and you can yeah. clean up on this one. You bet. Um, I, I think we've been booking uh, a lot of um, group conversations. Last week, we had a, a group of 45 leaders from a community in their, their community leadership program. And 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 they asked, <laughs> we said, you, we can chat about anything. But um, at this time in, in, uh, in the season, we want to talk about adversity and resilience, you know, investing in their adversity and resilience. So I, I think, um, you know, spreading the word in a very intimate way with groups in person that way, but also getting the word out to, to others. Uh, you know, we've had a few universities pick up this book as, you know, core curriculum, and, and that's really exciting. Um, so I think, uh, you know, doing more things like this, um, really uh, allowing this book to, to breathe a little bit. Um, you know, uh, sort of get uh, get picked up by word of mouth to to other leaders who who want to take this forward. Um, and and Kathleen, I'm going to quote you. It's it's less of a book and more of a movement. I I think uh, we'll let the movement breathe. Jeff, I agree. I think there are lots of there's a lot of interest and need that seems to be emerging. And I think uh, part of our hope is that we will, uh, to the extent possible, help guide this idea that as we are doing leadership development, personal development. Um, it is an iterative, ongoing, not perfect process. And if the quotes in the book uh, have given people, I guess, permission or validation or a bit of an opening to sit down and really think intentionally uh, about what they do each day and what they want to be doing in 10 years, then that will be mission accomplished. Um, and I have found already um, as we facilitate leadership classes, as we're working with students, having thought through the different themes of the chapters actually enhances our ability to meet people where they are and try to figure out where do you need just a little more support first to, to get you going um, down, down the path you want uh, for yourself. So there's still plenty, the movement is nascent and there's still plenty of momentum to be built. Um, Absolutely. Tony, to you. Yeah, so Kathleen, I would, I would tell you that the three of us 
are also a work in process in different parts of our life. And we came together through uh, universal forces that put us into the same conversation. And, you know, we are a work in process. So we continually ask ourselves, are we doing this right? You know, are the three of us, you know, doing this right? And I think that's going to be one of the things that we're going to have to face up to is, you know, what, what did the three of us want to do and be open to what wants to happen? For, for example, you know, part of the discernment process that we talked about with the publisher was really narrowing down the focus of this book. But in doing so, we had to set aside some amazing, powerful, mid-career type topics and also executive senior level issues that come up in the mid to later part of, of a career. So we've got a lot of material out there. Um, we've got a launch team that's numbering over 600 helping us promote the book and also asking how they can help with the next edition uh, coming down the way. And, and some of the next editions might be a mid-career book, like, am I still doing this right? Or you know, or did I do this right at the end of a career, you know, but there's definitely something out there that could come about, but we're not rushing towards writing another book. We're not giving any commitments to any publishers or anything like that. We simply want to make sure that we honor the work that we did over the last two and a half years together uh, and make sure that we learn from this uh, book launch and that we, the three of us come together and say, you know, what wants to happen right now? And are we open to that? And let's figure it out together. And we'll keep asking, are we doing this right? And we'll keep answering the best we can and we'll take it one step at a time. And I acknowledge each of you, especially with what you just said, Tony, there, I'm a part of the National Speakers Association. I work with speakers and authors and consultants all the time. And one of the things that I see consistently is that somebody launches a book, they have this great idea and like five people look at it. <laughs> you said earlier, I think eight people have seen this. And you know, Tony, the number that you just said, having 600 people on the book launch team, we're not talking about 600 people reading it on the team saying, I will hold this torch and go light all these fires around. That is such an incredible, just, I'll use the word army, but I really, I, I think you're talking about a movement here and you're moving that forward because you've intentionally created that. And my experience of the three of you is very humble and having a movement and you want to serve the people around you. And, and I acknowledge you for being that because clearly it's working. So. We're all, we're all pilgrims on this journey, right, Matthew? That's oh my right. gosh. The, the pilgrim yeah. method uh, analogy is strong. I mean, servants, leaders, and, and pilgrims is, is what, uh, what I, you know, aspire to be, but um, you, you put a book out there and, and it's sort of like unleashing um, a, a little bit of a monster and, and you know, um, trying to, to, to feed that, um, but also, you know, maintain your own balance. Um, I think, um, you know, with, with a lot of other commitments and, uh, but it, it has been humbling and it's, it's been a lot of fun, <laughs> a lot of fun. And late nights and, and late nights and, and weekends, and, <laughs> but it, yeah. it's all worth it. So we have about one minute left in this show. And I just, I want to thank each of you for being here, being present with our guests today. How do they get a hold of you if they have other questions? I think you can visit uh, doingthisrightbooks.com. Um, I, I will say that that would be the, the best place. We each have our, our author pages there and that uh, that take you to our individual contact information. Um, you can find the book uh, at Amazon or any of your local booksellers or, or Barnes & Noble. I think there's hundreds, if not thousands of, uh, of, of outlets at this point. Um, and whether you're here in America or all around the world, uh, I think Tony, um, his network extends far and wide, even down into Argentina. Uh, I saw him in a little bit of a Argentinian, Argentinian jersey um, yesterday. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I think the reviews are pouring in and you can get it print or digital uh, uh, all around the world. Tony, Jeff? Yep, it's available. India, we've had great stories and messages from India, Germany, uh, Brazil, uh, UK, all around the world. And we, we absolutely love the feedback. Um, if, if anyone is so inclined, we would appreciate a rating on Amazon as well. That helps yes. improve the reach. 
yep. through that and process. Tony, almost said we got like five seconds left. So thank you so much for being on here. You guys have a great day. And thank you everybody for joining us. On thank the you Kathleen for listening Reason to the show. Kathleen Reeson the Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. Kathleen Reeson will return next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Have a great week.